Mike and Adam's dreams and feelings. I, I started. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, were you ready, Mike? Uh, yeah. I was doing my yoga breathing. <laughs> How did that work out? Well, you know, I, I come 30 minutes before. Uh-huh. I do a full yoga set. Hot yoga. Hot what? yoga. Tiny pants. <laughs> That's what makes it hot. Yes. Um, and you, I do downward moon. <laughs> what? Half dog. Half dog. Upwards cat. Takes a nap. Takes a nap, yep. That's my favorite yoga pose. Yep. And now, once my chi gets centered into my chakra, then I'm ready to do a podcast. <laughs> Is that what happens? Yes. Is your chi centered? My chi is in the center. <laughs> Man. Well, I mean, I'm excited. What episode number are we on, Mike? 34. Oh! 34. We're, we're officially older than me. That's strange. <laughs> Didn't think we'd get there. Nope, nope. Didn't think I'd get there. None of the haters did. <laughs> you didn't think you'd get to age 34, or you, were the one, you didn't think the podcast would get to 34? Both. That's what I figured. My uh, my predictions were way off. Mm, it's true. But um, it has been a week since we did the last podcast. Do you mind just giving me a rundown of kind of what went down last time? Well, you know, I was going to play just some audio clips. Yeah. Of uh, things we said. <laughs> That's crazy. I know, I know. Uh, We've come so far. Or it might just sound like reenactments of what we did last time. Dramatic reenactments. Yes. Like, for example... Adam, put the golden key into the secret door. No, Mike, you can't take my arm off. That happened. Right, that did happen. I still don't have my arm back. I know, but look at the treasure we got. <laughs> it's not worth it. Vintage pogs. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Some of those are upwards to $3. <laughs> yeah, my arm is worth nothing now. <laughs> yes, yes. Or... That last time on the episode, Adam, the baby's not mine. <laughs> I still don't know what that baby's doing. <laughs> it literally just crawling around my house. <laughs> well, someone had to keep it. What? Why did you volunteer me? Because I said no keepsies. <laughs> oh, 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 Mike, do you remember that one time on the um, the last episode when you were like, pass me the Ariana Grande, not the singer. The drug. Yeah. And then I woke up in Cleveland. Yeah. Wearing a tutu. Typical. 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 Classic Mike. Classic Ariana Grande. Class. <laughs> oh, man. Not that we're implying that Ariana Grande likes and enjoys, and enjoys using her own drug. <laughs> I would. If, if you had a drug named Adam K. Yeah. What would it do? It would be um, a knockoff of Special K. <laughs> and it would just be a more accurately priced cereal. <laughs> so a discounted cereal. Yeah, That's pretty your much. drug. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, my drug, uh, Michael M., <laughs> would make you sassy at inappropriate times. <laughs> so don't, don't take it before a funeral. <laughs> or at an interview. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Sucker! <laughs> I work really well with others as I drop kick them through a table. Yes. <laughs> others being me. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying you want to put yourself through a table? <laughs> the shoe fits. <laughs> put it through a table. <laughs> As they say. In the immortal words of the Dudley boys. <laughs> yes. Get the tables. Get the tables. Oh, man. So, uh, so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so, I don't know how, uh, if you watched WrestleMania this uh, this past weekend. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar won the, the championship. But the Hardy boys came back. They did. And, and in their uh, full-on deletion... Wonderful broken Matt Hardy. Did they? Did yeah. they pick that angle up? I was only yeah. able to see the YouTube uh, preview, and mm. it looked like uh, Matt had his old hair. So I thought WWE nixed it. No, he's in full, full broken Matt Hardy. 
the leash and chance and all. Yeah. It was great. This is probably the third character the WWE borrowed and let them keep their right. old persona. Right? Well, so, like, AJ Styles got to yeah. stay phenomenal, obviously. Yeah. Goldberg. Goldberg. Got to be Goldberg. Got to be Goldberg. And then the, the Hardys. The Hardys. Oh, yeah, yeah I guess the Hardys. I mean, the Hardys get to stay. But, like, I mean, the Dudley boys got to stay the Dudley boys. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they left, and then they did, they were independent for a while, then they yeah. came back. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, no. I, th- I feel like the WWE has kind of realized that they needed... And I think it's all because of Triple... I think Triple H has done a really good job with NXT, and they kind of realizing the, the importance of, like, the independent scene. And, like, yeah. Um, in right. response is like try to keep or, or bring over characters um, just because I feel like they haven't been doing a really good job of creating their own yeah no, they're not the only game in town right exactly and you can only make Rusev so many times right right mm-hmm. yeah I did manage to to sneak a look at the AJ versus Shane O'Mac match <laughs> yeah it was a... and I realized that WWE really focuses on slowing matches down. Yeah. Like, there's a little dance by each of them, Mm -hmm. and then they do, like, a a few arm flips. Right, Back to dancing. Back to Arm flips. Like, that that match probably um, is is what AJ has to do now. When he used to have those triple threats with Samoa Joe and Christopher Daniels, and those were, like, blink and you'll miss it. Right, yeah. I mean, in that same WrestleMania, they had a really great two-on-two match. It was um, Samoa Joe with, um, what's his name? Uh, this is awkward. Um, oh, who was in the match? Oh, I should have. We always need to do research before we come in and talk. Rusev? No, it was not Rusev. Um, but on the other side, it was, um, uh, who was it? Gilbert. Gilbert. No, this is awkward. We're going to pretend that we didn't talk about this, and then we're going to repost it later, actually. Or you can just look it up. Look it up on your phone. Okay, okay. We have a phone. Uh, um, what, what should I type in? Samoa uh, Joe. Samoa Joe sells tag out. team. Oh. Sells out. So he's um he's on the <laughs> yeah. uh, the authority. Oh, is that a... Oh, that's that's a thing, right? Yes, yeah. I don't know things. I only know the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Did it pop up? Let's see... Yeah, so you you entertain our guests. Yes, yeah, entertaining the guests. Yes, I'll I'll look it up. But speaking of wrestling, I've been really enjoying on Netflix. So you guys have an opportunity to watch this. But they have a couple of episodes, or a couple of seasons of Lucha Underground on there featuring um, former WWE talent such as John Morrison um, and um, mm-hmm. you know Chavo Guerrero, um, famously. Um, from the Guerrero clan and um, also part of the WWE at some point in his career. But um, but actually the commentators, and you'll actually you'll appreciate this, um, Vampiro is one of the commentators on Lucha Underground. Oh, yeah. And um, Matt Stryker, Matt um, Stryker. From, from ROH, um, Ring of Honor. So it's been really cool, um, which is super sad. Did you find? Uh, there's a lot of WrestleMania links. That's true. Wait, can I see your phone? Oh. Oh no. I don't know if it was necessarily in WrestleMania, but it might have just been on the Raw. But he was in a tag team match with, I think it was Samoa Joe and Seth Rollins versus, um, I, I want to say Kevin Owens and um, somebody else. Uh, no, I know who it was. It was Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn versus uh, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. I think. I think that's what the the four of those guys. Um, Kevin Owen defeats Chris Jericho. No, that was oh, something else. That was pretty cool though. Hardy Boys won the Fatal Four later ma- ladder match. Yeah. John Cena and Nikki Bella defeat Miz and Maurice. Yeah, I don't know if it was actually on. It might have been on the Raw after wrestling. Seth Rollins defeats Triple H. Yeah, that was good. Randy Orton defeats Bray Wyatt. Yes. And Brock Lesnar defeats Goldberg. Goldberg. No, Wait, I, it's that's not the, the last match, is oh. it? Yeah, it, it might it might have been on the Raw after the Raw after WrestleMania. Yeah. Oh, you know, I thought I thought the main event was Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. Was that the main event? Because it, it should be. It was the championship match. According to this, the WWE put Roman Reigns defeats the Undertaker as the last. Oh, thing. that might have been it. 
Yeah. Well, I it was probably one of those interchangeable kind of things. Um, or, or and even before that, Naomi defeats Alexa Bliss, Natalia, Carmella, Becky Lynch, Mickey James. Yeah, for the the women's title. Wow, a women's match. Yeah. Was ahead of Brock Lesnar. Right? Isn't that mm-hmm. isn't it amazing how far we've come? You know, yeah. you would never you never see that. Um, you know. Yeah. Know, three years ago. Yeah. Which is uh, props to them. I mean, they're you know just because they're women doesn't mean that they're not talented. Doesn't mean that they're not right. incredible wrestlers. Women are doing much better wrestling moves than their usual hair pull. Right. That um, that cheesy stuff just to get male viewers. Right, right. They're actually doing real... 540 splashes. 540 splashes, German suplexes. Hurricane runners. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Uh, So, good for them. Good Good for for them, them. them, I wouldn't want to mess with them. Um, But, you know... If Susan oh, well, B. Good. Anthony had a finisher, what would it be? <laughs> um, I feel like Susan B. Anthony um, would take her um, wrestling um, pointers from Hulk Hogan. Yes. I feel like she would. She would definitely have like a Hulk up sort of situation, <laughs> yes. and then like a finger point, and then followed by an atomic leg, like a spine buster, followed by a, uh, an atomic leg drop. That's definitely Susan B. Anthony's. Can her move be called the voter exploder? <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> the voter exploder. Which is the leg drop right to the vocal cords. <laughs> yes, yes. So that would be great. Um, right. And, uh, you know, uh, do you know um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton? Oh. Um, also another blunt, another lady at the forefront and another... Tag Rochester, partner. Tag partner and another Rochesterian. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like she would maybe be a little bit more of a, a cruiserweight kind of, uh, like, a, like a Neville... Yeah, maybe, uh, the um, Katon Satan. Exactly, <laughs> and, <laughs> and she would just have like a maybe a modified um, kind of li- like lion salt off yes. the middle rope. Mm-hmm. The Katon Plancha. Yes. <laughs> the Canton uh, Swanton Bomb. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Canton Swanton Bomb. That's good. That's yeah, that's, that's great. Mm-hmm. Doing those ladies proud. Yeah. So, you know, I've been... You've been finding Lucha Libre Underground. Mm, yes. I, I find... Uh, the, I use the Fight app, which has yes. ROH episodes. Nice. And Hollywood Wrestling. Okay. Or Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Okay. It's called okay. that. And it's, it's pretty interesting. It reminds me of the glory days of WCW, you know, back when it was like a fun 90s promo where everyone just kind of took the mic and did what they wanted right right and they just kind of show up and just yeah but it, it kind of has like this California hippie feel like everyone's been doused in sunlight <laughs> which doesn't happen in Rochester no what is that um, it's literally snowing yeah it's it's snowing right now the the light winter snows of spring right exactly um, so but I like it everyone's kind of like beach blonde and <laughs> And they're like, yo, I'm in a match. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'd watch it. Mm. Yeah. And um, the show, for the most part, is very family friendly. Awesome. That's good. You don't, we don't get that a lot. Yeah. I mean, now, although I feel like the, the WWE has gotten a lot of mm-hmm. heat in, in recent years for going PG. Yeah. Um, and I get that. But I also feel like um, what they made PG um, was more of the adult content, like mm-hmm. kind of the language and maybe some of the, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have Triple H, you know, uh, pretending to be Kane and going into a, uh, I don't know if you've heard about this, no. but in a promo, he like went into a, a funeral home pretending to be Kane and like yeah. pretended to uh, do adult things to a cadaver. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, and just like dumb stuff like that, um, and it's just like you know, good for yeah. good for WWE to kind yeah. of put an end to that. Can you can you imagine being a wrestling promotion for sixty years mm-hmm. and saying how do we build heat in the Kane Triple H match? Right. Someone raises their hand and they said we've never had Triple H dress up as Kane right and do X rated things right. in a funeral. <laughs> right. Exactly. And someone said, you know what? You're right. Right. Let's do it. But, you know, that's the attitude era. Yeah, that's the right? attitude. Bad attitude. Right. Mm-hmm. So speaking of bad attitudes yeah. and violence, I feel like we should get into our 
topic of discussion for the week. Uh, yes. Let's do it. Our, the, the, the fighting games. Fighting games. Everyone loves them. Everyone's played them. If you've ever been part of the Super Nintendo N64 PlayStation era, you've you've picked up a Street Fighter. Right. Maybe a, a Super Mortal Smash Com- Brothers, a Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah. Um, Clay Fighters. Clay Fighters, always a favorite. Right, yeah. The, my first Super Nintendo game with humor and a vocal track. <laughs> that just blew my mind. Mm, a yeah. Virtua Fighter for the S. Oh, Virtua Fighter. Dang, you know, I, I have to get rid of one of my guys because there's someone from Virtua Fighter that I just remember is, is it the way ninja? better. Uh, we'll see, we'll okay, see. Okay. okay. Um, maybe, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll start with... Um, Honorable mention. Okay, okay. Uh, honorable mention, the blob from Clay Fighters. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty great. He turns into this razor blade, which like cuts into the bad guys and does... This was before they had combos, mm. but you could do like a 10-hit combo, and that was just amazing. Right, right. And I, I remember you hold down an L, he turns into a boot, and... <laughs> If you hit it square, you actually smush your character underneath. Nice. That's funny. And I was like, I was a force to be reckoned with. Oh, I'm sure you were. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't have any honorable mentions. I, I wasn't yeah. ready for it. I just have my top five. Okay, well, let, let's um, go. Just know that uh, the blob is honorable mention. Yeah, honorable mention. Word. Um, so who's, who, what's your, the first one on your list? Um, the first one I would have to say is Jonathan Talbane from Darkstalkers. Okay. He's a werewolf. You know, Darkstalkers is all about the dead fighting each other mm-hmm. and Street Fighter-esque type moves. But Jonathan Talbane, he had he did this nunchucks move. Interesting. And he turned into this comet that flew at your... And you could just make that comet just fly everywhere throughout the whole match. It was so unfair. That's, that sounds overpowered. <laughs> The only way I get to level three in any arcade game is if I just picked him and right. just hit all the buttons. Just and mashed. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, well, I guess I do have an honorable mention. I'll, I'll go with um, Link and Soul Calibur. Um, I, I I definitely loved the crossover. I did like I like the idea of being able to play as Link in a uh, in a beat 'em up. Um, mm-hmm. That wasn't Smash Bros. It wasn't Smash Bros. And I feel like it was a really good move on Nintendo's part mm-hmm. to let that happen. I feel like that was that was something that was really cool. Yeah. But, um, so my my first one is um, from Tekken, yeah. um, and uh, it's it's King King it's from King Tekken. King from Tekken. Who doesn't love King? Mm-hmm. Um, he's a he's a luchador, which is great. He's yeah. got a great he's got a great tiger mask. Mm-hmm. Uh, leopard mask, and he's inspired by some real life wrestlers, and of course, um, and um, you know his his move set's really cool. Um, he's definitely more counter oriented, definitely more throw oriented, as opposed to maybe um, some of the other characters that are just like, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna punch you as many times in the face. So he's you know definitely a character of high talent, but uh, needed to play. But he, um, I just love I love his look. I think he looks cool, and yeah. I think he's he's definitely more of the uh, one of the more unique fighters, I think, in, mm-hmm. in, in arcade beat em ups. I don't think there's a comparable, anyone comparable yeah. to King. Back, back, circle, he does the spinning back. The spinning, kick. yeah. Mm-hmm. Forward, forward, circle, he does like a, a kind of a Booker T kick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was doing some research before this, and apparently he has something like 200 move combinations. Oh, I bet. I and bet. It's, just, it's just crazy, but, um, mm-hmm. but yeah. I like King. My number four would have to be Lion from Virtua Fighter. Nice. Now he has uh, now everyone from Virtua Fighter has real life martial arts, and right. they made it super realistic. But I've never heard of his before, and I, I wish I'd looked it up. Right. He's kind of an add-in at the last second. Mm. But uh, Lion was like this fifteen-year-old boy, maybe 17, I don't know, with Japan it's hard. Right. He was blonde, he had this orange vest, <laughs> and he did like this praying mantis type fighting style, mm-hmm. where, um, and it was, it was so cool because it, it looked so much different than everyone else's style. It looked right. so fluid, and the moves were easy to do, and he looked like he could flip at any time. Right, right. Um, and everyone else in the game kind of had punch 
harder punch right. kick. Right. But he, he had that cool flippy moves that I really, really liked. Mm. And he also had the worst tagline when you won. He'd, he'd get in this very effeminate pose and say, What a knucklehead! <laughs> it's very 90s. Yes. <laughs> what a knucklehead! What a knucklehead! Uh, so my, my number four comes from the illustrious Street Fighter series. Um, yep. I mean, there there's so many great characters in Street Fighter. Honestly, I could have filled the five my five favorite with just mm-hmm. people from Street Fighter. Um, I mean, you have M Bison, you know, one of the greatest villains of all time. Great mm-hmm. um, with the Psycho Driver, right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I mean, Ryu. Uh, I mean, how many? Honestly, though, how many quarters do you think people have wasted trying to beat M Bison? In like, I don't think it is possible. Right. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I um, mean, Chun Li, great. Guile is wonderful. I love Guile. That hair. That hair, though. Yeah. Um, but my my favorite and the character I always play as is Ken. I love Ken. Ken. I mean, he's got the same move set as Ryu, but he's got a but whole different white. attitude. <laughs> but he is white, <laughs> and that's why I like him. Yes. <laughs> no, um, I like him. Um, I think it's a it's just the characterization. Like yeah. he's he's. He's got like uh, some kind of American kind of awesomeness. Yeah. Kind of, he's uh, very sarcastic and he's funny and he's likable and mm-hmm. um, I, I you know his I feel like his um, his move set differs a little bit and it's he's a little got bit, the uppercuts exactly it's mm-hmm. it's a little bit more flashy yeah. than Ryu's style and um, I definitely I, I love me I love me some Ken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of nineties eras. Mm. My next one is Johnny Cage. No! My next one was Johnny Cage. No! Perfect, though. Yeah. Um, Johnny Cage is great. I love Johnny Cage, mm. especially in Mortal Kombat 2, because he could uppercut a little bit faster. Right, right. And then he had that cool, like, I'm a Hollywood hero <laughs> animation where he puts on the shades. The shades, yes. And who can forget his uh, his his nut punch? <laughs> of course, finisher, of yes. course. Mm-hmm. That's so good. I mean, any any character based on John Claude Van Damme is going to be my favorite. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And I love I love the whole life imitates art thing when they base a character on John Claude Van Damme, and then John Claude Van Damme plays that character. Oh, he played. Was supposed to play that character. He was. He was supposed to in the movie, but then he ended up doing Bloodsport instead. Oh. But he was slated to play uh, really? Johnny Cage. Now I really want to know who originally played Johnny Cage. You should, man, look, let's look it up. Johnny Cage actor. I remember saying this is the coolest mm. actor ever. Right. But, um, but yeah, no, it's funny that we put them both at our number three. That's great. I love it. Um, it's yeah. Lyndon Ashby. Yes. Um, but I guess in the interest of maybe making the, the list a little bit, uh, a little bit more diverse... Um, I also from the Street Fighter series. I I love me some Raiden. Like who doesn't love Raiden? Oh, oh, you mean from Mortal oh, Kombat? Sorry, Mortal Kombat. Yes, um, Raiden. I love Raiden. Um, you know the Thunder God himself. Mm-hmm. Um, that gr- he's got a great hat, really yeah. cool gi, Thunder you, powers. When he does the back back forward Superman mm. charge, right? Do you know what he says? No, what does he say? He says, "Your mother's from LA." <laughs> <laughs> That was the joke. That's that so good. Joke. I love. That. I didn't. I've never heard that. Yeah, you you listen. It's your mother's from LA. <laughs> that's so, <laughs> that's so great. Mm. Oh man. But yeah, no. So Raiden, Raiden is gonna be my number three. Um, it was it was honestly for me it was a toss up between Johnny Cage and him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're both good, and I always, I'll always remember that you hold square mm. in the second round for thirty seconds. And you release it during the finishing move to do the electrify to a crisp finisher. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'd spend days trying to do everyone's finisher. That's interesting. I always remember Baraka's. You hold, you hold a block, back, 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 triangle, cuts off the head. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. But I mean, again, like, um, uh, uh, what is it? uh, it's there's so many good. There's so many good characters in yeah. that series, Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat. Uh, just Scorpion, um, mm. Sub Zero. Yeah. Like, what more do you want? What I what I don't like is when games like Dead or Alive came out, mm. which were all about the well endowed women. Yeah, yeah. And the 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 
Jello physics. Yeah. Then Mortal Kombat copied it, and they took all their females and gave them very low cut outfits with the the Jello physics. So like, I can't enjoy the females as much anymore, knowing that that is they they sold out to that. Right. But you know, it used to be me and Melina, Melina, and yeah, Katana, and, right, yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, you can, the list goes on and on. I, I yeah. feel like all the characters. I mean, Shao uh, was it Shao Kahn? Yeah. Um, I mean, again, another character that you wasted quarters to try yeah. and, to try and be is is well done series with a lot of good characters. Yeah, I used to have to do the thirty lives <laughs> cheat <laughs> over and the Super Nintendo over and over and over. I don't think I ever, like, I think I might have beaten Shao Kahn maybe twice. Interesting. Couldn't even get past Kentaro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Goro. Goro. Oh, man. All those O-R-O names. Right? It's so Horrible. Nice. It's so bad. But yeah, anyways, what is your, what is your Number next two, one? Captain Falcon. No! He's my next one! <laughs> no! <laughs> no way! No! This is impossible. How did this happen? Uh. How did this happen? You want you changed yours, so I'm I'm gonna okay. put in my number two, um, Soul Calibur's Siegfried. Okay, okay. He's a tank. He's yeah, a, he's, he's a great. man with a huge sword, and mm. there's something about that huge sword that if you, it kept people at a length at length. Yeah. And then, but it would also it would also just like crush them. Right, right. And I I love that about him. Like everyone picked Killick. Right? right, because his moves were like lightning fast. Mm -hmm. But I picked Siegfried, knowing that I could just do like this this level clearing sword right. crunch. Right. So. Um. And he in the original Soul Calibur, he's the the the, the kayfabe winner. Yeah. Um. Overall, the tournament, and then don't they in subsequent Soul Calibur games, he has Soul Calibur, right? And he's yeah. like a different character. Yeah. They made him a big story. Part in like the yeah. later ones, mm -hmm. and uh, it's is he the character he becomes like is it nightmare or what does he become? Well, um, no, is nightmare is like another guy with a style, the and style. he's the one who has the soul calibur. So okay, I don't know how they're related. I thought they were the same person. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I could be totally wrong. Who so, knows the soul, soul calibur? Soul calibur lore. Right. I, who knows? You know, these fighting games, they want to pretend they have a story. Right, they don't. But if you look. If you try to make it make sense, it won't. Right. Like in like in Tekken, like how many times have the main characters try to kill each other? Yeah. <laughs> Effectively dropped each other into volcanoes. Yes. Yeah. Like what is that even about? No one even knows. But my number four is Captain Falcon, who yes. we both chose, and he's nothing makes me happier than loading up a game of Smash with, you know, with your buddies and you Tap in, punch in Captain Falcon. Immediately go for the the white and pink outfit because you know you gotta stand <laughs> out. I always play. We well, we always call them uh, that outfit, Captain Candy. Mm -hmm. um, and we, uh, there's just something satisfying about landing a Falcon punch on somebody, uh, yeah, and just right. blowing them off the stage. One hit kills. One That's hit the kills. only way I could ever win. <laughs> um, I, I I loved, um, I loved using the the, the Falcon punch. But also to to set up other things. So it's, it's more often than not, as they would uh, as they see you charging it up, they would you know jump away or anything like that. And I feel like that's where Captain Falcon really shines. And he's he's got really good aerial abilities. His B up, his mm -hmm. his grab and explode, um, his his cap his Falcon uh, Falcon kick. In addition to his A over, um, mm -hmm. which in subsequent games allowed him to like kind of dash across the map. Right. So uh, I feel like he's just a really good rounded fighter. And I, I I love me Captain Falcon. He was like the he's the Ryu. Yeah, <laughs> until, until they brought in Ryu. Yes, uh, but uh, I guess honorable mentions from um, Smash Bros. I love I love me um, um, Ike. I think Ike is yeah. great. I love Ike and Pokemon Trainer. I feel like that was really innovative and in being able to play. Did Pokemon you ever have a Ganondorf face? Um, I I didn't like Ganondorf only because I felt like he was really similar to Captain Falcon, but I just like Captain Falcon better. Yeah. I, mean, I thought Ganondorf was maybe a little bit stronger. Yeah, he was. He was stronger, but he was slower. Yeah. All right. Wow. So number one. Guaranteed, okay. we don't have the same one. I, I'm gonna preface this. Uh huh. Because this character was always off limits. Uh huh. Because of how unfair he was, and how he could link every move together. Uh huh. And how easy it was. <laughs> Is it Marth? No. <laughs> 
Um, Tekken 3 is Eddie Gordo. Yes! Eddie Gordo. Like, if you picked Eddie Gordo, you the other person would have to pick Eddie Gordo, too. <laughs> there, there'd Gordo. be just no way. I love Eddie Gordo. That's yeah. so good. And I guarantee no one knew about Capoeira. Yeah. Uh, Brazilian dance fighting until Eddie Gordo came onto the scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That's... that's- I love that. Did you did you make it a habit of this? Is he your favorite? Like, do you play him? Like, sometimes I, I don't play him just because I don't want to win that fast. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like against the computer. Like, I'm just juggling someone with that like spinning breakdance kick. Right. <laughs> no one knows what to do. <laughs> right. You, what do you do? Yeah. Give up. Mm-hmm. Um, man. Um, and my final character. Um, is is Mike Hagar from Final Fight? <laughs> Final Fight. <laughs> from Final Fight. <laughs> oh my God, uh, Tom Selleck. To- the Tom Selleck cosplayer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I love Mike Hagar, and I know I know he's not technically in a fighting game, but he does get imported over to some other Capcom, Capcom games. Capcom versus uh, Marvel. Exactly. Yeah. So you can play as Mike Hagar. So I feel fully justified in picking him. Uh, but I just love the idea that he's the mayor of that town, and instead of like sending in the SWAT team to get his daughter, he decides to take on the gang by himself. <laughs> like he's the mayor. Yes. Wow, I know that's that's interesting. Right, think about that. And he's just but like he's a big the guy. The cool thing is, he has two friends. <laughs> right, right. He's a Cody. Who's right. just like this pool playing right. street fighter. Right, right. And Guy, a ninja, he just happens to know. Right, right. It's such an 80s concept. Yes. <laughs> but what did, I, what did I write down? I said, um, he's the mayor slash re- he's the mayor slash wrestler of the city. <laughs> and it's, oh, it's just so gr- I, I just love him as a, as a concept. It's so ridiculous to me. Yeah. Um, and, but the fact that he also goes around and does a lot of property damage <laughs> as the mayor... <laughs> Really? Assaulting civilians. Yeah. <laughs> There's literally parts where you can like fight a car yeah. and like you get like health and stuff at like the end of levels for how well you damage the right. car. It's like that is your mayor causing property damage. <laughs> yes. Yes, apparently he doesn't want re-election. Right. Or he's working really hard for it. Yes. <laughs> I would vote for him. Um it's just like it's it's you know, it's the same I, I feel like it's playing off the idea of like you know, when Ace Ventura, or Ace Ventura, or, um, um, the, the body, what's yeah. his name? This is not Ace Ventura, uh, what is his name? Jesse the... Jesse the Body yeah. Ventura, yeah. yes, was, was, you know, governor, or, uh, of Minnesota. Yeah. Or when, um, you know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, you know, right. also the governor. So it's just like, I love the idea of this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> some guy that plays a role that you don't really, you don't, you don't really expect. Right, right. Like if uh, Van Damme was the mayor of North Dakota. Right, right. Not <laughs> Van Damme. Isn't he Canadian? I feel like he's Canadian. They'd still let him in. Right, yeah. right, right. I feel like he'd fit right in in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, no, that was that. I like that list, Mike. I'm not. I, I'm not that. Uh, I'm not that well versed in fighting games. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that stretched me a little bit. Besides, like the only fighting game that I've dumped time into is Smash Bros. Yeah. Every, everyone's... Even, it, casual people go to Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if you're a Super Nintendo player, you have, a, you have a favorite Street Fighter. Oh, for sure. Even if you're the girlfriend of a Super Nintendo player, right. you yep. really like Blanca because he's cute. <laughs> right, right. Or Guile. Or Guile. That yeah. hair. That hair, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those kicks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But you know, I, so yeah, I I feel like fighting games. Uh, I I just love that the expectation for a fighting game is how outlandish can we make our characters, mm-hmm. um, how obscure of a martial art can we give them, and how many ninjas can we put into the game? Like yes. that's that's how you make a good fighting game. Right, right. And every um every fighting game has the white guy that knows karate. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the Japanese guy that knows karate. <laughs> Someone from India. <laughs> Always. Someone from Brazil. <laughs> and a wrestler. Oh, that is that is always Russian. Yes. They're always Russian. Yeah, that, that is... is you, Zangief. <laughs> yes. Uh, mm-hmm. 
Oh man, it's so funny. I love it. It's mm-hmm. it, and even in, in games like Soul Calibur, you still see the tropes kind of like transfer over. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have the you have the run really speedy character that's like small and kind of weasley. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would I would like to see that stereotype like totally messed with. Mm-hmm. Like I want a fifteen year old black kid who has the black belt in karate. Right, right. The big strong guy who does uh, tai chi. Right. right. <laughs> a woman with an eye patch that does break dance fighting. Right, right, right. <laughs> a drug dealer that knows taekwondo. Right, right. <laughs> A bodyguard for someone that know that fights with fans. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. But you know, I I, I love, I love how uh, video games have the things that make them uniquely them, and like, yeah. um, and they don't necessarily because you don't see the kind of tropes that you see in fighting games necessarily transfer over to other games. Yeah. Like you you wouldn't you would never confuse Ocarina of Time with. Now, Street Fighter uh, right. or Ultra Street Fighter. It was both great and classic games, but like both very distinct, very very different, but right. equally, you know, cornerstones of their industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's great. Fighting games, fighting games. Yeah. Where, what are we gonna do? Or where, where are we gonna go next? Well, you know, we have a very special guest. We do. Let's bring him in. I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Maybe you want to. T- talk about him or maybe I know a little bit more about yeah, him yeah I mean well, well, well let's start with his name um, he goes wanna... by Peter the Pulverizer Peter the Pulverizer yeah. uh, he's currently trying to get into WWE he is he is he's done a lot of underground circuits mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, big in Ukrainian underground <laughs> wrestling yes that is the one thing that I was abundantly made clear UUW UUW <laughs> hard to say <laughs> right <yeah. laughs> UUW yeah but you can see it on channel 3026 at <laughs> yeah. midnight at midnight ESPN 13. <laughs> Deportes. <laughs> Deportes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to bring in, uh, you know, uh, Peter, the, Peter the Pulverizer. Peter the Pulverizer. Come on in, buddy. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Peter. Um, uh, do you feel at home in our country uh, with all this nice <laughs> weather we're having? I, I do love the Americans. Mm-hmm. I, the Americans are, are, are the, the, the wonderful people. They, mm. they give you the coffee. Yes, yes. They give you the cigars. Yes, yes. And uh, they, I, I like the fish. <laughs> the fish? Right? Yes. Oh, what kind of fish? Well, part of my, uh, my, my wrestling uh, diet yes. regime mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is to take a salmon okay. and just bite the flesh off. <laughs> All of it, all of the flesh off mm. in one bite. And, and yes, kind of like a like a, I, I put the the whole thing in my mouth mm. and just pull out the tail, <laughs> and I, I chew it down and get the protein. The pro okay, mm-hmm. interesting. So, um, but it must be really hard to get that kind of that protein in your diet when you're traveling all over the indie scene here in the United States. Um, what are some of your highlights? Where 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 are some places that you've you've hung your hat for a bit? Uh, you know, I did that uh, that small stint in Japan. Okay. Okay. Where uh, we went into uh, small bars. Okay. And challenged sumo wrestlers to oh. uh, chair matches. Oh, I thought you like wrestled it like New Japan or pro wrestling or. No. You know, I, I put in my application. Okay. But they said they didn't need someone as violent as me. Oh. So you went around to bars. And yes. fought people. What was okay? Where, where else have you been? Well, I, I've been to uh, Germany. Okay. Where I actually fought in prisons. Oh, f- <laughs> did you get arrested and then put into prison? Uh, yes, yes. The application is very tough. Okay. How did? What did you do to get arrested? Well, you know, I would uh, go into like a, a local convenience store, go go to the uh, the, the shops person. Okay. And I would staple his tie <laughs> to the cash register. <laughs> oh, vogue. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and uh, give him a noogie. A noogie, okay. Until it was considered a concussion. <laughs> How quickly did that happen? Yeah, no, it, uh, it took a good hour. <laughs> so, and nobody went to stop you? Well, eventually I got arrested. Okay, right, right. So, so okay, so, okay. So I'm starting to get a bigger picture of, of your wrestling and your wrestling style. Uh, but what would you say are maybe some of your finishers? What are, what are, oh. the, what are your favorite moves? In, in Ukraine, we do a little bit different. Uh, wrestling is real. Oh. Well, okay. well, they say in uh, America, it is a big ballet, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a big drama, a real. soap opera for little men. Right, right. Um, in, in the Ukraine, we, we, 
the purpose is to sever a bone. Oh, oh, okay. So my move was always to put them in a headlock. Mm Mm-hmm. And then to put their hand in a paper shredder. Oh. Yes. I feel like that's more severe than just breaking a bone. I feel like that's loss of limb. Well, it's a a finisher. Right, right. It it literally finished their career. Okay. Okay. So how do you feel like that's going to translate over here in the United States? Well, as as you know, I've I've tried many times, Mm. sent many videos to WWE. Yes. Said I would do NXT. Right, right. Or I I wouldn't be uh, on SmackDown just yet. Right, right. Uh, No good. No No, good. No good. Yeah. Uh, are there any maybe wrestlers or pro wrestlers here in the United States that you'd really look forward to maybe trying to compete with? I've always wanted to get into a, a bamboo match a, with the Brooklyn Brawler. Brooklyn Brawler? <laughs> in my country, he is huge. <laughs> the Brooklyn Brawler. Yes, we have given him many titles. <laughs> <laughs> Yet he has not fought once. Oh. But every time we see him, we say, that man deserves a title. Mm hmm. So you want to do a, a Punjabi prison match? Yes, yes, with Brooklyn Brawler. Brooklyn Brawler, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, not, you know, the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar? Oh, no, 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 no. We, we call him Little Man in our country. <laughs> but, Brook, but the Brooklyn Brawler, he's, yes, he's good. He's got what we call internal intestitude. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, so where do you feel like um, your brand... Um, would really fit in with the wrestling market. Do you feel like if the WWE thing doesn't work out, do you think you would try maybe the independent circuit? You see, we see a lot of people like Cody Rhodes um, making our Kurt Angle going on from working in a professional in a professional standpoint from in the WWE, making really big careers on like in Ring of Honor and stuff like that. Well, I have this idea mm-hmm. where I start my own federation. Oh, okay, okay. I, I walk out into Times Square. Okay. I take a megaphone, uh-huh. and I find the strongest man, and I yell obscenities at him. <laughs> Until he fights you? Until he fights me. Okay. Then we get a referee, mm-hmm. and we get a bunch of chairs, uh-huh. maybe a few poo jambies. Okay, okay. And we just tussle it out. <laughs> tussle, okay. And okay. then at the end, he wins his goat. Mm. His, uh, is, that, is that what you guys fight for? Everyone gets a goat. We don't get titles in right. UUW. Okay. You get the gold goat. Um, the silver goat, uh-huh. the intercontinental goat. Oh, okay, okay, he's been to many different countries. Okay, do you get to eat the goat or you just keep oh, it? We we keep the goat. Okay, okay. We have to give it back when we lose the title. Okay, you know. okay. What happens when it dies? When when it dies, we we retire the belt. Okay, as they say uh-huh. in the country. <laughs> And you get a new, you get a new one. We get a new goat. A new goat. Okay. A universe goat. A, um, <laughs> a universal goat. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have like a hardcore title? Well, like, everything is hardcore in UUW. Okay. It's kind of like the normal rules match. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have to go one step higher. Okay. Where we just put the guns <laughs> under the ring. Okay. Okay. And we just shoot each other. <laughs> Until oh. one of us lays down for three seconds. Okay, okay. How many times have you been shot? I have taken uh, two bullets to the shoulder. Okay. One, this is a fake earlobe, by okay. the way. Okay, okay. Um, this is not my original pinky. Okay. Who's pinky? Wait, wait. Whose pinky is it's, it? It's, it's a fake prosthetic pinky. Okay. And my kneecap is 20% made out of seaweed. Oh, okay. Organic. Yes. Organic like seaweed. Okay. Yes. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so how long do you feel like you can reasonably keep up this work rate? I mean, famously, we have in the United States, people have had to take a break. Like, HPK had to take a break because, you know, because of his back and knee problems. Also, you know, our, our Stone Cold Steve Austin had a, you know, damaged spine. Mm-hmm. So, like, how often do you say, or do you, do you take breaks, or how often is the life expectancy? There was this one time... Mm-hmm. I was fighting our version of HBK. Okay. ABK. Okay, what does that stand for? Um, American boy kid. Okay. The American boy kid. We, we hate him. <laughs> okay. He's, he's a bad guy. Okay, okay. Um, he did the, the super duper kick right, to right. my head. Uh-huh. And I actually went back in time. <laughs> you kicked you so hard you went back in time. Yes. So for 30 years, oh. I had to travel through the 70s. <laughs> okay. Before I could go back... To the birth of UUW and fight again. <laughs> and fight again. Wow. Yes. That's, uh, that's... I was a... considered on the shelf. 
<laughs> that's that's some broken Matt Hardy level stuff. Oh yes, yes, very much. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, so um, so Peter, um, what what kind of advice do you have for any um, for any up and coming UUW um, recruits? Well, as we as we tell all the kids, mm-hmm. you know, you need a strong heart, mm-hmm. good insurance. Uh huh. You can't love any of your limbs. Okay. And good, very good insurance. Okay. You know, it's it's twice as important. Right, right. You you have to have the insurance because, as as our life expectancy rate is about a week. Uh huh. And I'm the only one who's lasted two years. <laughs> well, technically you've lasted thirty years. Thirty, yeah, thirty years. Yes. Right. That's a part of the. That's a secret. Get kicked <laughs> back in time. Right, right. Um. Uh, yes. I'm the only one who's won every goat. <laughs> oh, and actually seen a goat die in wow. my lifetime. That's crazy. So you know they're they're actually putting me in the UUW Hall of Fame. Is it just you in the Hall of Fame? So far, it's just me. Okay, but um, you know, since your life expectancy, you need to give your mother and children some some money for when you die. Some goats. Yes. Some, so they can get goats of their own. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, one final question before I let you go, there, Peter. Um, and if I was Vince McMahon right now, what would you what would you tell me? What is your elevator pitch? I say, Vince, this, this is actually what I would do in the ring. Okay. I, I stand on the turnbuckle. I raise up the goat spine. Okay. And swing it around so the blood gets on the fence. Right, right. And they are screaming, Peter, Peter, Peter. <laughs> right, right. And then, and then I jump down on top of a referee. Okay, okay. I, I break his arm, steal a fingernail, okay, and throw it at my opponent. Oh no! And say, "Give me your goat." <laughs> and that is my that's my shtick. That's your shtick. Yes. Wow. Um, and you know, and honestly, Vince McMahon might be crazy enough to to accept that. Yes. Yes. Of course. Um, and so Peter, thanks thanks so much for having uh for being on. Do you have any any kind of last words anything before you depart I d- you know I just you know follow your dreams mm. stay in school uh huh live, live for the goat live for the goat yeah live for the goat live for the goat that's, yes. that's good I like that Peter yes. thank you so much yes um, good luck in your future endeavors alright alright um, um, I, I look forward to seeing you on WWE I, I have to go to Times Square okay have fun I have good a luck. meeting <laughs> you have a meeting okay yes. <laughs> it's nice to meet you Peter right. see, see you later see you Peter I like him. I, where did you meet Peter? Part of my small group. <laughs> oh, wow, that's great. He, yeah. he loves Jesus? He loves... Oh, he loves Jesus. <laughs> that's crazy. Theology this. Yeah. Spirit told me to do this. Mm-hmm. He can quote James chapter 4. <laughs> From memory? From memory. Wow. Yes. He's a very complex individual. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, man. I, mm-hmm. I look forward to, to seeing his success. Yeah. Oh, you will. I think. I really think NXT is going to just... Take them in. I I'm gonna need to change my pants. I <laughs> I'm very afraid. Yes, yes. That man was quite large. Yes, he's he's very large. He took up the couch. That, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. We had to get a second couch in here. Yes, the Peter couch. The Peter couch. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that was that was great. Where, I, I, where are you finding these people? I, like I said, you know, we have a very diverse small group. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we all come from different faith paths. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of us are rock stars. Some of us are Ukrainian wrestlers. Right. Some of us are Stone Cold Brother. Right. Right. You have a lot of wrestlers. You know, we do. We do. Podcast. You know, right. maybe maybe the uh, my my pitch for the small group was if you like wearing just underwear. Right. And you love Jesus. Come by. Come by. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. My favorite part was when he said he, he liked the Brooklyn Brawler more than he liked <laughs> Brock Lesnar. Yes, yes. You know, and I, I, I think he has a point there. Does he? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know about that. We, do you remember that SmackDown match? Mm. It was three against Triple H. Uh-huh. I think it was Kai and Ty <laughs> and the Brooklyn Brawler. Right. And that was the only time... Brooklyn Brawler has yep. never gotten a victory. Right, he pinned, he pinned Triple H. Yes, and won. And won. Mm-hmm. And who says that Triple H is king of the burial? Yeah. Oh, man, that's great. Um, but yeah, I can't see who uh, you're going to bring in next time. 
I, you know, it's like, it's it's hilarious and fun. Yeah, that's one way to describe it. Yes, but I, I heard around the rumor mill, mm. like a literal mill yeah. with the rumors, the rumors, um, that you have a game. Uh, I do have a game, and it's called um, shoot. What did I call it? Did I write it down? I did not write it. Um, so essentially, the game is I'm gonna give you a scenario, and you have to make it better. And you have to then also make it worse. So I, I want to say, Ooh. so like, for example, I go to the grocery store. And then you, can, you, you have to say, well, what would make it better? Well, uh, you, you find... I get half off Pepsi. Right. And then to make it worse, you would say... It was uh, at Tops. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, I'm going to give you a bunch of um, hopefully better, more outlandish situations oh, yeah. than a grocery store. Um, but uh, I think we're gonna call this um, this game for better or for worser. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So I like it already. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, we'll we'll start off with a softball, a really nice, easy one. Mm-hmm. You're at a uh, hot air balloon festival. Hot air balloon festival. Um, it's better because I take a politician and learn that his promises actually lift the balloon. <laughs> oh man, that, that is some wishful thinking, right? Yes. Okay. It's worse, because I have to stay with the politician <laughs> to get the balloon <laughs> nice. to work. Nice. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, next one. You're at a uh, food truck rodeo. Uh, I'm at a food truck rodeo, mm-hmm. and there's a authentic... Mexican taco stand that has like uh, all you can eat make your own taco mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for $20 nice it's worse because it's authentic Mexican water <laughs> yes <laughs> okay you're um, you're see now this one the, the next situation has been inspired by Peter but um, mm-hmm. you find yourself in a Punjabi prison match oh a Punjabi prison um, it, it would be awesome because I can use the bamboo <laughs> uh-huh. to whittle some nice furniture <laughs> after the match. <laughs> yes. It's bad because I'm probably going to be bleeding out. <laughs> That's true. During the furniture building <laughs> right, process. Right. Or you're going to have to be fighting the great Kali. <laughs> yeah, the great Kali. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, next situation. You find yourself... Um, alone in the woods on a nice uh, on a nice afternoon. It's amazing because I finally get to try any berry I find on a bush. Right, right. Without any criticism <laughs> or naysaying mm-hmm. from a crowd. Right, right. It, it's bad because even though I'm alone, no one will help me to my real dream, which is to ride a deer. <laughs> Oh man! Why did God give them such stable backs? <laughs> they didn't want to if you think you yes. know, ride them. Yeah. Yes. And um, in my my final and wonderful situation for you, Mike, mm-hmm. as we we set off on this great new adventure, this great new game, you're sitting there, and in front of you, you have a bottle of Ariana Grande. So I have a bottle of Ariana Grande. Yes. And I, I think it's amazing because. I'm probably no. I think it's worse because mm. I'm probably drinking it because something horrible happened in my life. Right, right. That made me have to have to resort resort to such violent eating habits. <laughs> uh, maybe I lost my job. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, my my child doesn't believe I'm good at Legos. <laughs> right, right. One of those horrible reasons. Right, right. It's amazing mm. because where I end up next. Mm-hmm. After I black out, right. is anyone's guess. <laughs> right, anyone's guess. On the floor of Caesar's Palace. Right, you could be in Times Square. In Times a... Square, <laughs> being heckled <laughs> by a Ukrainian man. Right, exactly. Who yeah. knows? It's mm-hmm. a wonderful adventure. So, yeah, I mean, Mike, did you want to give the game a try? Or did you want to... I have um, I have a topic of discussion that I would... Well, yeah, I have a game, actually. Oh, perfect, let's do and the this game. Is a, this is another brand new game. Yes. Um, Trying out new games. It's gotten stale. we gotta, we got to do new no. games on the show. So, this was actually tried by some kids. Yes. Um, where they're given a famous quote, and they have to finish it, but they don't know the quote, mm-hmm. so it's usually hilarious because right. they're super wrong. Right. 
So I invented a game called Finish Wrong and Strong. <laughs> okay. Where I start off a famous lyric or a quote, mm -hmm. and you just you just have to be wrong and strong about <laughs> right, it. Right, right, right. So wait, I have to finish the quote, but it doesn't matter if it's right or not? It, it, okay. The goal is to be wrong. Okay, perfect. Okay. perfect. <laughs> okay. So, for example, everyone's favorite pop lyric, my milkshake brings all the... Goats to the yard. <laughs> Goats to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, good. Goats to the yard. Yes. All right. Wake up in the morning feeling like... <laughs> I've been pile-driven by Peter. <laughs> yes. Okay, good, good. We're sticking with the theme. Oh, Ukrainian sorry. theme. Sorry, sorry. I'm just, no. I'm just, he just made a real big impression. Yeah, I know. He, he does that. I followed him on Twitter. Yes. Um, Under threat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a finger pointing, right, saying, right. you want to live, you click follow. You click the follow. Yes. I get knocked down, and then I... Stay there because I have very low self-esteem, and I just don't want to get knocked down again, so I'm just going to stay there uh, for, for a while. My favorite Batman quote. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to fear but... <laughs> really large spiders. I hate spiders. It's really scary. Yes. Oh, good, yes. All's well that ends... Mediocre. <laughs> it starts off well, and it's still good if it ends mediocre. <laughs> kind of felt like that was the lost theme. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> despite on my rage... Wait, what? Oh, despite all my rage. Yeah. Um, 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 <laughs> I don't know, I'm scared. That's really Despite all my rage, I don't know, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm all alone in this darkness. Yes. Is, is, that, is that from uh, Rage Against the Machine? No, no, no. The next one's Rage Against okay. the Machine, actually. Um, that was from Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins, yeah. Um, Rally Round No Family with a... <laughs> Wait, read that again. Uh, Rally Round No Family with a... Um, I, I, I don't know. Zach Dave LaRoche is saying, you can't gather your family mm -hmm. when you have... When you have anger management issues. <laughs> <laughs> you really can't. You can't. <laughs> I would say rally round no family with a poor rally round stance <laughs> on rally rounding. A rally... <laughs> May the force... Um... Be poorly explained by Qui Gon Jin. <laughs> May the force equal a concussion. Right. <laughs> May the force be a felony in thirty-five states. Yes. You had me at. K bye. <laughs> you had me at K bye. <laughs> Not K lol. No. K bye. K bye. Uh, <laughs> The cutest way to get a boy, right? Obviously, mm. thunderbolts and lightning, very, very. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I think Queen took that. <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone listening. <laughs> um, that switchfoot quote: "We were made for something." Um, <laughs> we were made to have our fingers shoved into a paper shredder. <laughs> I really hope not. I really, I really hope that's not in God's agenda. <laughs> yeah. It's not how many times you fall down, but... The amount of times you think about getting back up. <laughs> and do it later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when Irish eyes are smiling... You too is happy. <laughs> you too is happy. I would have said, when Irish eyes are smiling... Get the mace. <laughs> Get the mace? <laughs> Get the mace? <laughs> yes, you don't want them to smile. No. So that's Finish Wrong and Finish Strong. Yes. Two new games. Yes. I love it. I love it. Mm. Oh, man. So, um, do, you, do, you have, uh, do you have anything you want to talk about before I kind um, of... I have, I have something that... Oh, you, you I've, I've been next. obsessed. I've been... I've, strangely, a lot this week, I've been having a lot of conversations with people about multiplayer and multiplayer experiences. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask you how you feel about um, the recent more, the advent of um, the removal of on a couch multiplayer from um, from like uh, the Xbox One and like PlayStation, uh, what is it on, PlayStation 4? Yeah. And like, 
where do you hope to see the future in uh, multiplayer gaming? Yeah. Well, it's it's getting pretty weird how yeah badly we want a single player. Right. Or people think we want single player. Yeah. Because you went from Mario Brothers, right, the first two player game. Even Duck Hunt was two player. Right. Right. You never duck hunt with two players. No, absolutely not. And um, but. And then N64 geniusly came with four controller mm-hmm. things. Sucks. And like every game had split screen. Even Tony Hawk right. had a four player split yeah, screen. They did? And that was like wild at the time. Right. You ever have Tony Hawk parties? Oh, I did not because more, me and my friends more played GoldenEye yes. on the split screen and we played Smash Bros. Yeah. Um, and Mario Kart, which is also split screen. Mm-hmm. So, But I mean, yeah, in the, in the same part. Um, I, I really only played um, Tony Hawk on the PlayStation, but it was usually mm-hmm. me and my brother, so it was like we were playing the split right. screen. Right, yeah, split screen. Um, and then, you know, online came out, and it had this weird phase where it was on PS2 and Xbox. You couldn't really talk to anyone. Right, right. Unless you had, like, the $600 a month internet. Right. And then it went to MMOs. Yeah. Where you can kind of, like, type... And you say things like "get the flag," right, or your mother, right, uh, and like I think that's the, that's what gamers think that's the new couch play is is right. that you know get the flag, watch my flank, right, you know go 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 that's right. that's the new way to enjoy a good brotherhood, right, which Sad. yeah any anyone will tell you, and then the final evolution is VR where you go all mm. by yourself all alone, right, you put on special goggles. And you share something with only you. Right. <laughs> and that makes me sad. Mm-hmm. I think the next gaming thing will be you go to the Himalayas, <laughs> put your phone on plane mode. Right. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to have service up in the yeah. Himalayas. <laughs> and then you just, you just play by yourself. Right. Um, that's so sad because that's, that's the one thing I loved about mm-hmm. video games growing up. It didn't really matter who mm-hmm. you were or what you did. Like, everyone just wanted to trade Pokemon with you on the bus. Right. Like, I remember that was uh, really one of the biggest... The, the, and I think the only thing that kind of comes close is also another Pokemon game when I, when I was playing Pokemon Go. But there was such a community, like, on my school bus. Like, everyone had a Game Boy. Everyone had Pokemon Red, Pokemon mm-hmm. Blue, Pokemon Yellow. And, you know, people were like, oh, I have a Kadabra. Can you trade me that Pidgeotto? And you're like, yeah, absolutely. And you bring up the Link cable and, like... No, you do it on the bus. Knows like, Kadabra's not a good trade <laughs> for a Pidgeotto. I'm sorry, I panicked. That guy got screwed. <laughs> I panicked and just picked <laughs> yes. two Pokemon. All right, all right, <laughs> forgive it. Uh, um, but uh, I, but I'm really hoping um, into the future that more game designers create games like Pokemon Go, where um, it like I've I've never experienced something like going outside. Playing Pokemon Go and seeing dozens of people also playing Pokemon Go and everyone knowing that everyone else is playing Pokemon Go and talking about it and, mm-hmm. and like experiencing something together. Yeah. But wouldn't you say there's a difference between social gaming sure, sure. and a bunch of people in the same room and maybe all they're talking about is the video games? Sure. Because I think, I think what they're trying to do now is they're trying to integrate Facebook, Skype, they're trying to make it more conversational. Right. I know there's a game where you can write notes to each other. Interesting. Um, you can do that in Dark Souls. Yep. You you write little uh, social notes. Yeah, yeah. And like that's that's cool too. I think I think if they took it in that direction where you could be more creative and mm-hmm. more social. Right, right. That would be a good thing, but if also they kept the couch multiplayer. Right. We've all seen the switch where you set up that little tablet. Right. And you can plug in two controllers. You can play with it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, it feels like the last good on a couch game was the, the Borderlands, Borderlands yeah. 1 and 2. Um, yeah. I, I think there's there's some indie companies trying to bring back the funness of four yeah. players. Yeah. For example, you have this game called Move or Die. Okay. Where you're, if you, you can't hold still or your character dies, mm-hmm. then you have to get into these little mini games. Like, one okay. of the mini games is you have to. Um, throw people into buzz saws. <laughs> oh yeah. man, yes. that's pretty great. Yeah, and it's like it's just frantic, and mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's pretty great. That sounds awesome. Yeah, but yeah, no, I like um, the, the classic Mario parties, the the Mario Kart. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I just remember you know growing up in the late nineties, early two thousands. Like, you know, when we went over to your friend to sleep over, like we marathon those games. Mm-hmm. 
over weekends. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. And it just doesn't happen anymore. Those, those play, PlayStation 1 nights where we play WCW Mayhem and right. you'd have Norman Smiley from Goldberg <laughs> 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 with a, a, a leg, an ankle lock. Of course, of yes. course. <laughs> or it's just like, yeah, but now I just feel like people, um, like kids come home, they yeah. throw in Black Ops 2 and they just mm-hmm. go to town on online multiplayer and it's just not, yeah. there's not that sense of, oh hey, we're all going to Bobby's house this weekend. You know, mm-hmm. you bring them out with you, I'll bring the Funyuns, and like, yeah. um, it just it just doesn't feel the same anymore. But do you think maybe because it has more to do with people, like, they're, they're targeting it towards the millennials who drive cars and have nine to five jobs. Right. Which also means that no one has any time to mm. have meaningful sit down, let me visit your house, let me visit your house. Right. So they say, you know, the closest you'll ever get is two people uh, like on black ops together right. over land. Right. Um, cause if you're honest and you were to say, mm-hmm. made a Facebook event that said, you know, I want to have an old school golden eye party. Right. Um, come to my house. Do you think you'll get a lot of like, absolutely responses? not. No, I definitely won't. Right. I, right. Like I'll, I, I could throw in a gold brick for right. each person. <laughs> right. It'd be, It'd be hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, we have a group of people that play Dungeons and Dragons and it's, we haven't played in months just because our schedules have been like yeah. super straight and crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, and I agree. I think if we're honest, I feel like um, times have changed. Yeah. I think on the couch is, I don't know, it doesn't really exist anymore. But. Mm-hmm. You know, I would give up all casual video game playing if I could just have a designated three hours every Saturday right. with me and four other people. Mm. Um, and we just play a variety of different retro slash PC slash, you know, Flash games. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Did you have you you've probably never been to there's a video game museum okay. in Arondequite. Oh, I've not been there. Um and you pay to stay for a few hours. Right. And you can play every major system from Sega Genesis to Ouya. That's crazy. Yeah. And like if if me and a bunch of friends just, just did that. Right. Like That'd be cool. That'd be cool, yeah. That'd be cool. I'd be mm-hmm. down. That'd be yeah. I, I but um there's uh in the strong museum have you been to the strong museum uh, yes play? so in, in Rochester there's this really cool museum it's dedicated to mm-hmm. um play essentially um like different eras different aspects of, mm-hmm. of toys and things like that uh, but one of their floors is dedicated completely to video games yes it is and they have a sweet arcade um mm-hmm. and um last time I was there I was with like a group of friends from from campus and we had a ball like we played for like an hour we just played a bunch of different games we played. Right. And it was just a lot of fun. It's just like, we don't have arcades anymore. Like, um, I remember um, there's a mall um, in Henrietta or Greece. Um, there used to be an arcade, and they, they took it out, and it's not there anymore. And every time right. I walked in the mall, I'm like, I had some good memories. Yes. I, play, I played Soul Calibur there. Right. MCC used to have Soul Calibur 2. <laughs> yes. Um, I wonder if they like, still have their mini arcade. Yes, I remember it. I, I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. I, I remember I'd go to Taco Bell. Two Taco Supremes, no cheese. Right. Then I'd go over to Tekken Tag, uh-huh. play a game. Soul Calibur 2, play a game. Maybe attend a class. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Oh. Man, that's, yeah, good times. Mm-hmm. Good times. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. I just, I, I just wish it wasn't like um, that, like, arcade and um like on a couch weren't like retro like you know what i mean like right, right. That's, that's it's it shouldn't be a novelty like like games should come like multiplayer yeah. like it's so sad to me like pick like games like uh games like payday mm-hmm. um great games wonderful multiplayer but it's not on a couch yeah. uh multiplayer which I, I was just like why is, this game is so good and i would buy this game to play it but i don't i, I don't want to play it online like i want to play like mm-hmm. i don't want to play this game like on a couch with some friends and just because I, I just know that the, the like the tension of robbing a bank would be great if you had friends with you on a couch. Mm-hmm. Like Mike, yes. Mike, <laughs> send Cone up the staircase. You gotta hurry up with the safe. Yeah, right. Absolutely, and I, you know I wouldn't be surprised if Borderlands Three nixes the split screen. Oh, that would make me so sad. Yeah, because they did they did it. Another great game that would be beautiful co op so that split screen would be the Dead uh, 
It's not dead rising. It's uh, Left for Dead. Uh, rising tide, dead tide. Um, dead rising. No, 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 no. It's you're on an island with zombies. Um, dead island. Dead island. <laughs> you're on an island with zombies. Yes, yeah. that one. I. I'm oh yeah. They it's like if you want co-op, you need an extra television. Yeah. An extra Xbox and yeah. that link cable that no one buys. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is so dumb. Mm-hmm. So dumb. But um, yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but there, when Bomberman was big in the Super Nintendo, mm-hmm. you could buy the Super Eight. Which is eight, eight places to put your controller. So you could get eight people to play <laughs> Bomberman? Yes. That's incredible. I yes. love that. Mm-hmm. I love that so much. Yeah. I just love... I just love the chaos that that yeah. would be. Just eight characters on a screen, you trying to figure out which one is yours. Yes. <laughs> because even in four-player, it's just like sometimes you gotta wait, wait, which, yeah. which one am I? Exactly. Especially yeah. when, like, you know, you're playing Smash Bros and you pick Captain Falcon and then... Here comes Mike, and he picks Captain Falcon, too. <laughs> just a room of Captain Falcons. Right, and you're just like, which one am I? Falcon Punch, right. Falcon Punch, Falcon Punch. <laughs> oh, I'm not that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I. video game companies make more multiplayer games Yeah. right now. As soon as we make more friends. Exactly. <laughs> How much time we got? We're we're doing we're doing okay. We're doing we're doing pretty good. Okay. I think we got time to do one more thing and then maybe okay. uh, um, eat some food so and wrap it up. Yesterday or last night, around midnight, I was reading um, Rabbi Zacharias's book Beyond Opinion, mm. which talks about how to how to compare your faith to other schools of thought. And I I read the the Islam chapter mm-hmm. and. <clears throat> It was, uh, I think, uh, a rabbi, Dr. Rabbi, he, he grew up with that. Like, that was the faith of his family. So he kind of had firsthand knowledge, and he did a lot of studying. Interesting. And he, he kind of goes over, um, this is why we don't believe the same thing. Right. And, you know, I actually learned that there's a, there's a, a doctrine in Islam. Um, it's, got a, it's got this cool word, but... Um, since the goal of Islam is to win back the world, because everyone was a former Muslim right, before right. they were deceived, um, that you can you can actually trick people into going back to Islam. So say like I don't you can if you go up to a stranger and the stranger says, you know I don't I don't believe in your beliefs because you do this, and the the Islamic person can say, um, actually we do believe in that. And, you know, it would be totally a deception, but it would be considered righteous because you won that person over. Right. Even if it was a trick. Right. So yeah. you can lie to them to convert them? Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So um, at least that's the kind of um, understanding he got when he was, he was, he was reading uh, all those uh, passages from the Koran. Okay. So, uh, but what I wanted to talk about is as professional ministers, ambassadors... Uh, evangelists like and going to two very diverse schools yep um, like how do you approach people from other religions mm. it's, a, it's a good question um, I know um, first and foremost um, I just you know you just gotta view them as, as people right like mm-hmm. um, they're not they're not people to be defeated right they're not a, it's yeah. not a point of view that you gotta de- you know you gotta get one over on them right um, and it's not a it's not a competition. It's not a contest. Um, it's not it's not even a war. Like right. it's um, it, it's honestly it's just like how much can you love them currently where they're at. Mm-hmm. Um, and more often than not, especially um, in faiths like um, like like the Muslim faith and um, mm-hmm. and or people that are maybe agnostic or or atheist. Um, uh, they just want to be heard. That, mm-hmm. That's I think that's the biggest thing that I found. Just, right. They they feel like they've been marginalized. They feel like they're not being listened to, and they just wanna they just wanna feel like they've been heard. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, very rarely um, do I um, like on first meeting someone um, do I go right for you need to be saved yeah. right like 
very rarely am I be like, oh, you've sinned against God and you need to receive salvation or else you'll be damned forever in hell and separation from Christ. Like, yeah. no, like that's not, that's not the approach uh, more often than not. And um, I love this philosophy that we've kind of championed here. It's like this idea of winning the right to share Christ, right. um, which is um, this idea of, of, you know, just doing life with them and just experiencing things with them and building trust and building mm-hmm. Um, and building um, reasons for them to trust you and then sharing Christ and, yeah. and them seeing that you're someone that can be trusted. Um, but yeah, what about you, Mike? What do you, what do you, well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking as you're, as you're saying that, yeah, like, sure. in the back of our minds, I think we're secretly hoping, I really hope you don't have a very stubborn reason not to follow this. Right, exactly. And because if someone, let's say it's on the other foot. Right. Um, someone really wants me to become Buddhist. Right. I have a very stubborn reason not to follow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but we're as, as Christians, uh, especially ones who believe in a higher power, who um, actively works, and we have a personal relationship. Um, you know, it's our it's our job to profess our faith, mm-hmm. have relationships with yep. people, um, kind of spread the word. Right. Um, so. Like I'm, I'm one of those ministers who who gets nervous talking to like atheists, right? Cause you know, because you're a normal, rational human being. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, or or they're gonna like they're gonna pull like they they all have like these science thesis in their pocket. And right. They pull out and they say, well, according to this genome project. Right. You're wrong. Right. And then right. I don't know where to go from there. Right. They're like, okay then. Right. You have you, a good day. You have a good day. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. No. And um, and I always um, in conversations that I have with uh, with other students and mm-hmm. other ministers is um, and kind of the thing that I've been getting is you you're never gonna convert someone by winning an argument. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just not how it's gonna work. Both people are gonna come in with their own side of their own philosophy, their own stats and statistics, and you're gonna fight and you're gonna argue for twenty minutes, and then you're both gonna walk away mad. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I'm like well, that's such a wasted opportunity. I would rather meet up with that person, grab some coffee, laugh a little bit about Virtua Fighter and mm-hmm. uh, maybe that movie that we saw together, and then maybe you know be like, hey, like um, I know you're a Buddhist, I know that you're Muslim, but my church is doing this really cool thing on Easter Sunday, and um, if you're not doing anything, do you maybe want to come hang out and we'll get Chipotle after? Like, right. I feel like that's way more effective. That's way more less that's less intimidating than like trying to like win someone over with like a right. fight and i i really think that a lot of evangelists uh believe that we always hear the story of the hell mary play yeah the guy sitting in a bar f- feels this inkling from god yeah points to a guy says what are you gonna do for eternity right man starts crying right right we think that that's that's evangelism mm. but nothing is more nothing is like ninety nine point nine percent of it is the earning the trust, the relationship, right? Where it actually makes sense to be like, I know you're Buddhist, but have you ever thought about this? Right. Or mm-hmm. where you actually get to work your faith into normal conversations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and mm-hmm. um, it's and the biggest thing is is like letting the Lord work and not letting you do, uh, not letting you take control and you mm-hmm. take care of the work. Um, and and that's not to say that like. Um, maybe if you are sitting in a bar and God like taps you on the shoulder and yeah. says, do that. Like if, if God is very clearly telling you to do that mm-hmm. and you're doing so out of, you know, out of, you know, out of response to the Holy Spirit, then by all means you need to do that yeah. because God is doing something great and awesome. But the amount of mm-hmm. times that I, I think that I can, that I've heard stories from people and maybe mm-hmm. experiencing myself of God very clearly tapping someone on the shoulder and being like, Hey, you need to go do this. It's like twice. Yeah. Like I've, everyone is just like, you know, the Holy Spirit told me to do this. I was like, yeah and no. Mm-hmm. Like, um, like the Holy Spirit obviously is guiding us and leading us, but very rarely does God speak to us directly and be like, you need to go tell this person. Uh, more often than not, it's, you know, through reading God's word, he gives us instructions and he speaks to us through that. And then, um, you know, and like he says in the Great Commission, you know, go and make disciples of all nations. So, um, and we, you, you do that by, by building those relationships and, and less so about um, going out and fighting and, 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 you know, getting into beefs on mm-hmm. Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. And I think really that we hunger and thirst for the right mm. and the authority to tell someone 
something about our faith that could change their life. Right, right. Um, and I think that's the, where the pressure comes in. That's yeah. where, um, when I do my ministry at the University of Rochester, and I see someone um, who clearly professes a different religion, mm-hmm. um, like I want to give them like the three strongest bullet points. <laughs> right. But really, all I can do is give them chips and say, "Good luck with your homework." Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also at the same time, it's just like I can, you know, so many of my friends that I've met like through ministry, mm-hmm. I know that they they've since come to Christ because of um, the the interactions and the time and investment that I've put into them. Um, far outweighs any of the arguments that I've had with them. Yeah. And like when you, you know, when someone gets up and like gives a testimony um, at their baptism, I don't think I've ever heard someone say, I got into an argument with and a guy lost. <laughs> and lost <laughs> in, in the cafeteria. And mm-hmm. I just realized that there was just no way other than Jesus. Yes. And so now I'm getting baptized today. Right. Like it's always um, them getting to a point where the only way they could look up, the only way they could get out is by looking up at Jesus and Jesus mm-hmm. using someone to help them out of their mess. Yes. And, um, and, and that's how it's always, that's how it always has been. And that's how it's always going to be. Yeah. And basically that you've, you've described every testimony where everyone comes to the point where they said, Oh, Jesus solves this problem. <laughs> right. And I'm glad I found it. Right. You know, thank you. Campus ambassadors. <laughs> right. right. And it's true. I guess, I guess if we thought in terms of, um, what problem could Jesus solve in any one of these people's lives? Right. Yeah. And then instead of, you know, just sitting up, like, I would say just sitting and praying, like, that's just, like, the minimal thing you do. Like, that's the best thing that you can do. But mm-hmm. also, you know, we need to tangibly do things. Um, like, mm-hmm. yeah, you need to pray about it, but, like, you see a situation in someone's life, and you're like, okay, how do you act? Right? Like, yeah, yeah. don't just pray about it, but be, you know, be hearers and doers of the word. Like like Dr. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Rabbi says at the end of the chapter, he's like, um, though you've heard stories of Muslims having dreams and Jesus appearing in that dream, you can't rely on that. Right. <laughs> you have to have some kind of contact mm. and some kind of relationship. Right, so. exactly. Mm. Right, and it's just like, you know, that person next to you is going to be more apt to listen to you if you buy them a slice of pizza. Mm-hmm. I know if you bought me a slice of pizza, I would do anything you wanted, Mike. Even do a podcast. Yes. And that's how we run you over. <laughs> what is this we? <laughs> Me and the Lord. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man. So we're we're quickly running out of time. Uh, we're at we're at we're at tw- we're twenty two minutes over an hour. But that's fine. Yeah, you know what? It's nothing we haven't done before. Right, that's what I'm saying. Um you know, sticking so let me tell you a story. Yes. We did Spicy Friday last Yeah, night. we did. And might I, might I say my bathroom visit was very interesting. <laughs> was it? Was it unfortunate? That's, and this is like the third time I've ever said, that's never happened before. <laughs> After you came out of a bathroom? Yes. <laughs> so, wasabi, or overdoing it with wasabi and spicy Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good day yeah, for you? Not a good day. Especially when you uh, mix ginseng mm. and then you're... Mike, I'll have you know that I consumed a garbage slate later that night. <laughs> and I was completely... And slept like a baby. And slept like a baby. Oh, man. Not me. Not me. Oh, man. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. <laughs> Cuts to 3 a.m. Mike is panicking on the toilet because he's <laughs> running out of toilet paper yes. rapidly. Yes. So, um, I wanted to um, introduce some oh. Asian delicacies. Oh, no. These aren't bugs, are they? Really good together. No, actually... Um, one of them is garlic peas. Oh, no. And the other is ginseng candy. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, okay, okay. Now, the ginseng will give you energy. The garlic will give you bad breath. <laughs> Perfect. Um, oh, these garlic peas look terrifying. Yeah. Never mind the old holiday picture on them. Right. They're from Halloween. Are these, are these, what are, green pea, palm oil, garlic, salt. Okay. At least they're like kind of dried out and crunchy. I was yeah. kind of hoping, if, like, if they were like soggy, I'd be like, mm mm. <laughs> Ooh, quite pungent. Yeah, they're pungent. It's It smells what I envision Guy Fieri would smell like. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> they actually smell pretty good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have one in my hand. Yeah, so. 
Yeah, so they're like, oh, they're just the shells. Hold on. There's an yeah. actual pea. Um, they kind of like flake apart. I don't know apart. anyone who's peeled pea shells. Right? <laughs> right? Shucking peas. Yeah. Have you had these before, Mike? Um, you know, I, I'm not a stranger to them, so. Okay, so you. you I, I'm really here for your. Okay, reaction. okay. So um, it is a dried marble um, of pea, <laughs> and um, here it goes. They're pretty good. No, this is like a pea bite with. Um, some garlic. Mm. Pretty good. I really think they're, they could beat chips. Honestly. If they wanted to. Yeah. These, these are the kind of, um, snacks that you, um, you buy because you convince yourself that they're healthy for you, <laughs> but they're really not. Nope. Still filled with sodium. Mm. Just in a different form. These are really good. Mm. See, I knew you'd say that, so I had to throw in the ginseng candy. <laughs> ginseng. Yeah. Ginseng is very good for your blood pressure. <laughs> Which you need after all the snacks we consume. Yeah. On the on the thing it says, Snow Mountain. Yeah, it actually came from a very expensive store. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Oh man, this looks like the pellet that you give to your rabbit. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It doesn't. This, this is a pellet Pac-Man would turn down. Oh man, this is. Oh, it's pungent. Yeah. Oh man, am I not gonna like this, Mike? Well, you know how you've never wanted to eat earwax? Yeah. You might have to. <laughs> oh, Mike. <laughs> Is it chewy? It's chewy, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, here it goes. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, it's very chewy. Oh. Oh, wow. It's got like a lead pencil kind of a texture. Yep. Ugh. It does not taste good. Mm -hmm. So, Adam is doing the most dour and sour face. Ugh. Eh. It's, it's gross. His, his, his facial features are screaming, no like, no like. No like. It tastes... <laughs> it tastes like someone took a pencil eraser. <laughs> and garnished it in the mouth. And garnished it with coffee grounds. <laughs> yes. That is an accurate description. Uh, and this isn't even the most potent form of ginseng. No, I bet not. I suppose I have to finish this. No, I don't. I'm not finishing this. <laughs> this is the 15th time that Adam has not finished the food. <laughs> I wish I could say that was impressive. Ah, <laughs> oh, it was gross. Mm -hmm. uh. You know, there used to be, uh, I think it was either Pepsi or Coke that had ginseng in it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like I it in drinks, yeah. like, I think, because you can't taste it, but. Yeah. Covered in sugar. Yeah, exactly. Like, green tea with ginseng. Yeah. That's my jam. Exactly. But, but yeah, so Mike, what, uh, what did you, what did you learn on the podcast uh, today? I learned last week when my brother listened to the podcast that he now wants to make barrel rolls. <laughs> uh, Which are? To me, I thought they'd be a fruit roll up. Rolled over nerds. <laughs> we need to do that next week. <laughs> next week, yes. Barrel rolls. Mm. Evidently, he also wanted to make Falcon Punch. <laughs> Ooh. Which is pretty alcoholic, but... Is it? Yes. I have to look that up. What's in it? Alcohol. <laughs> and some kind of fruit punch. <laughs> we won't consume that on this show. Mm. Family friendly. Mm. Mm -hmm. I learned... That ginseng is gross. Mm -hmm. And if I'd eaten the ginseng and the peas at the same time, I probably would have thrown up. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. I learned that Netflix has a Lucha Libre show. Yeah, we should definitely check it out. Which I now have a new obsession. Yeah, you should. it's, it's really well done. Like, like Matt, Matt Stryker is on it. Yeah. Uh, Vampiro commentates, Chavo Guerrero, like John Morrison, what's not to like? Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, my Hollywood one probably doesn't <laughs> quite match the <laughs> popularity of yours. The star the star power. But mm -hmm. um but yeah, I but what I really like about the show is how um how small the company is and they how they use all their characters to drive stories forward. Like all like all the um, all the wrestlers are in some way involved in a storyline, um, mm -hmm. so it's not just like 
you know, like it's not just like Zack Ryder just off in the corner doing nothing while yeah. John Cena and you know AJ Styles are all fighting. Like every single person in the company is involved in some way in a story arc, and that's really cool. No throwaway characters. Exactly. Looking at you, Fit Finley. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, check it out on check it out on Netflix. Um, Lucha, oh. Lucha, Lucha Underground. If you want to sponsor us, please do. That'd we'll be do great. It. We'll do it. We will. I will wear a mask. Uh-huh. Yeah. But speaking of sponsors, mm. uh, archive.org is mm. where you can get all of our mm. podcasts up until like um, chapter 30. Right, right. 30. Um, it's a great workout tape. Yeah. If you want to lift weights to our voice, I know mm. it angers a lot of people, raises their blood. <laughs> the blood pressure. Yeah, it makes you want to take up boxing. <laughs> so you can go to archive.org. Yes. Click on the, the music. Um, type in dreams and feelings. You'll get 32, 33, 34. Um, it's all good. Don't type dreams and feelings into the, the website finder. Um, I'm not going to be held responsible for what you find. Right, right. It's, uh, it finds other websites. Just just look. Just, just go to the audio parts. Yeah, just the audio. Um, um. In, other, in other news, if you're on our YouTube, you can like us, comment on us. Mm. Um, Review us. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't like. Mm. I really should have said this at the beginning right. because I'm not 100 percent sure you're gonna make it this far. No, hit us up on the hit us up on uh, Facebook too. Mm-hmm. Everyone hit share. Just yeah. hit share on Facebook because uh, we need to be big. Yeah, like eight people big. Bigger, <laughs> bigger than we already are. Mm-hmm. Anyways, thanks, friends. Yeah, thank we'll see you, you later. Bye bye. I, I did turn it off. You never do. I never expected. One of these days I'm going to actually turn it off correctly. <laughs> 30 minutes into it. Today is not a stay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. Mm-hmm.